<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Hollywood Sound Museum. <laughs> There's our theme song. Webinar right. number eight. Thank you so you much. You can have it for free. I Copyright appreciate 2020. That. You have to remember, when we were working for Roger, I was doing trailers originally. Sure. And when we had a sound effects library that consisted of a bunch of little rolls that we had pulled out of various um, tracks that we had found. Uh, and what we, it, we ran out of gunshots because we would use them so often. And so we <laughs> found a way of using car door slams. And a gunshot, if you played the car door slam loud enough and it distorted, it sounded like a gunshot. Oh, so wow. we could use them over and over. That was great. Um, That's great. But I had to, I, 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 it, was, uh, it was a baptism of fire as far yeah, as yeah. learning about sound. And it wasn't really until I started working with Mark uh, yeah. that I really understood the nuances of, of, uh, of how you do this kind of stuff because yeah. it was so primitive. Analog was so primitive at the time. Uh, and the and the mixes were done so quickly, usually a writer sound, and mm -hmm. uh, and you just you know you, there was no finessing. You didn't finesse anything. If you could hear the dialogue and you could sort of hear the music, and the and effects didn't drown everything else out, then it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you uh, I remember you telling me some of those stories from those primitive days. Did you say something about the? using like a yellow sky wind for like cloth movement when somebody forgot to foley a scene and just just really cheap quick and dirty things like that back in the old days that was one of them certainly because yeah. yellow sky wind just sounded like tape hiss and you could <laughs> imitate you could imitate anything and it, i think ben bird actually told me once that if you gave him pink noise he could turn it into anything <laughs> he, he, he could make a gunshot he could make an owl hoot it didn't put enough buttons on it he, he, he turned it into something let's talk about uh, gremlins a little and uh going back to what you were saying about little mistakes that you were able to to work in your favor uh i don't know who told i don't i don't know if it was richard or if you told me this joe but the great shot the one stop motion shot of all the gremlins Oh, rushing right. into out of the darkness yeah, well, you know what I, i'm talking about right i love i love stop motion and i always try to shoehorn it into my movies much to the chagrin sometimes of the producers and uh and on this mm -hmm. picture the, there was there, there was of course talk at the beginning of well we'll do everybody the grums will all be stop motion you're like we, we'd still be waiting for it to come out <laughs> um, but once we sold uh, sold ourselves on the puppetry and everything we still had these group shots that were very difficult to do and so pete kleinow uh did a tabletop gremlin uh march through the town uh with all the gremlins you know to show how many there are it's kind of a plot point and in the middle of shooting this thing and you know how long it takes it took like a day or two things, right yeah one of the lights blew out and there was there was there was a total no joy in mudville because everyone oh no we have to start over and i said no just put a sound effect on it and it'll sound like they broke a light. Yeah, make a note for Richard and, to put in the big so, class and crash. And that's what we did and that's the way it is in the movie. It's so true. It's brilliant. <laughs> but like the Warner Brothers Treg Brown sound effects have always popped up in your films, Joe. Well, yeah. For some reason. Has, as, has, as has the Wilhelm <laughs> scream, which of course uh, I was- What's that? I was introduced to uh, by my sound effects friends. Uh, and. <laughs> And I had even, I had seen that movie when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, well, know. it's in Hollywood Boulevard. It's in your first show because Ben and Richard well, were the guys Richard, who really ben did and it. Ben and Richard loved that thing. Yeah, and and of course now it's it's been used so many times that the audiences actually do recognize it now. Yeah, and, um, which <laughs> limits its usefulness somewhat, but uh, nonetheless, it's still always a pleasure to hear. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Mark. Uh, how did you, how do you remember that uh, the whole process starting for you on that show? Well, it started as all movies start, which is sitting down with Joe and on Inner Space was that Kent. I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed to Kent say it. I, I, I don't remember who was the editor. It always starts with us sitting together around the cam or whatever it was in those days and watching the movie and identifying what the sound challenges are. And then, um, you know, Joe and Mike were always great about letting me go off and have some amount of time to kind of play. So that entails going out and recording raw elements that we don't have in the library or we want a real custom sound for or designing sounds like the sounds of the pod and the sound of 
Igo's boosters as he flies around inside the body. And, and what does it sound like inside the body? Um, the, the, the recording story that stands out though is um, Martin Short drove a very exotic Mustang. Remember that, Joe, you know, that red yeah. convertible Mustang and that was a, a studio car and I didn't have anything in the library like that. So we asked if we could record it. So Warner Brothers Transportation gave us the car foolishly and uh, <laughs> we drove it out to the desert in Palmdale where it's quiet where we normally record and of course we drove the piss out of it and blew the engine oh, and boy. two weeks later they Warner Brothers sends out a tow truck brings it back to the studio and Mike Fennell calls me a week later what's this bill I got for nine thousand dollars for oh. a brand new engine <laughs> oh Jesus Mike doesn't like to pay for things that aren't on the screen <laughs> Wow. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you to our audience mm -hmm. and for uh, for watching all this. And uh, how are you going to cut this down to your seven minute version? I don't know. Yeah, I got to do my <laughs> teaser. Oh, we've got to do our we got to do our, our cliffhanger, Joe. That's Joe. Oh, what okay. is your secret to filmmaking? And and, and goodbye, everyone. I appreciate. I, it. I, I, I learned it from Mark. Person. And what it yes. is is.